Good morning. Here is the daily devotion for Monday the 25th of May. My Bible reading this morning is from Mark 10, 35 to 45. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right hand and the other on your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink? Or be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup. I drink and be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with. But to sit at my right hand or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Well, Jesus often told stories about the Pharisees always wanting to be seen for their good deeds and looking down on most of the normal people who they felt would never be as good as them. But now the disciples are feeling like this too. James and John had thought that Jesus' glory would be on earth when he took his rightful place as king, so they wanted to be the most important of the disciples and have the honour of being seated at each side of Jesus' throne. Some studies think that James and his brother John were Jesus' cousins. If you read this story in Matthew's Gospel, in chapter 20 from verse 20, it was the brother's mother who first asked if they could sit either side of his throne. She and her sons probably thought it was only fair that Jesus would give the best jobs to the family. This often happens these days too, I know, but it should always be the most deserving or the most suitable person who gets the job. But as Jesus had told them, even if they were willing to suffer like him, he couldn't choose who would sit at his right and left hand. Only God could cho choose these people. He also told them that they must not be like the rulers of the world who had great power and gave orders to the people who were not as powerful as them. When we read the Bible, that we see many situations and conversations that the disciples and the apostles had with Jesus that shows they never really understood the things he told them until after he had died on the cross. Then they realised after they had received the Holy Spirit what was expected of them was to serve people to take the good news of Jesus to all the people they met and to help them to know God. Then the apostles themselves would be blessed. During the pandemic, we have seen extraordinary deeds of kindness and people who have been acclaimed for things that they have done, which have been on the national news. People who we have never heard of before have now become household names like Captain Tom in particular. And although I am sure that he never sought this fame and has been very humble in every interview I have ever seen, there must be thousands upon thousands of people raising money and doing many acts of kindness and just going out and doing their jobs at great risk who we will never hear about. I wrote a poem about this which I would like to share with you now. It's called The Also Ran. I don't want to be an also ran, I said to the Lord one day. I want to do great deeds for you and let fortune come my way. 
My child, said the Lord, this cannot be. You cannot choose your fame. You have to wait my time and place if I wish to make your name. You will have to learn humility and putting yourself to the last. You need to learn to serve others and pride needs to be put in the past. My servants work for others, going forth to spread my word. They seek not fame for their own sake, but want only to serve their God. I realised then how selfish I'd been, though I'd meant it for the best. I resolved to continue my work for the Lord, even though I'd be put to the test. There are millions of people every day working quietly his word to bring. To those who have never heard the good news and never to his glory they sing. I want to be part of that anonymous crowd who works ceaselessly night and day to spread God's word all around the world and to teach others how to pray. Now I know, Lord, I'll never be famous or do deeds that others may see. But at the end I'd like as much as my epitaph that I also ran with thee. Well, if we all lived as real Christians, we would live like Jesus. He didn't come to rule over others. He came to serve them. And he lived his life for others and even died for them. And he died for us, as we know. So let's all resolve to do what we can to live like Jesus, to live like him now and in the future. And now let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will give us the ability and the strength to do everything that Jesus would want us to do, particularly during this time that we are going through, with all the difficulties and the concerns that we have. We just pray that you will bless all the people in all the churches, not only in this circuit, but round the country. We pray that you will bless all the people who are doing the dangerous jobs. We pray that you will bless all the families who have lost loved ones during this pandemic and all those who are still suffering in hospital. We pray that you will bless each and every one of us this morning and give us the opportunity to reach out to at least one other person during today, even if it's just ringing them to see if they're okay. And we ask these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. I'd like to f finish with a Celtic blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Amen. <laughs>